डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी हेलो डियर लर्नर्स दिस इज शची गुप्ता असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स फ्रॉम चैतन्य स्टूडियो ऑफ डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब अम्बेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी आई वुड लाइक टू वेलकम यू ऑल हियर फॉर द सेशन सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द बेसिक्स ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स दिस इज द पार्ट ऑफ योर पेपर वन एंड दिस विल कम अंडर द यूनिट ऑफ इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स पार्ट वन okay so we are going to discuss what is economics what is the problems of economics what is the scope of economics what is the nature of economics we are going to discuss all these things and after discussing all these things the outcome of session will be that you will be able to understand and describe the nature form and scope of economics now starting with the background of the topic i would like to tell you that basically we are going to discuss the definition scope in scope it is divided into two parts microeconomics and macroeconomics third is nature of economics and fourth is basic economic problems basic economic problems are what to produce how to produce and for whom to produce now we would like to focus on what is economics we are trying to understand the meaning of economics here the term economics originate from the greek word oikonomia that means household till 19th century economics was known as political economy there was no economic subject after a book named an inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth of nation which is written by adam smith economics is considered as the first modern work first time the economics is considered as a subject after this book an inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth of nation now if we want to sum up the meaning of economics it is like economics is the study of how a society chooses to use its limited resources to produce exchange and consume goods and services here i would like to tell you that in every economy there are limited resources resources are limited we have limited number of factors of production like land we have limited land we have limited number of labor we have limited amount of capital okay so these resources are limited but the need of human being are unlimited the needs of human being are unlimited and resources are limited so we have to manage in between these two the unlimited need of the man should be met by the limited resources of the country so here this balance this management is called economics now we are going to discuss the various definition of economics there are broadly four definitions of economics first is science of wealth given by adam smith he is also called as the father of economics second definition is science of material well being it was given by alfred marshall third one is science of choice making it was given by leonel robbins fourth is science of dynamic growth and development it was given by paul a samuelson now we are going to discuss these definitions one by one in detail the first definition science of wealth by adam smith economics is the science of wealth this definition was given by adam smith he is also considered as the father of economics according to this definition economics is the science of study of wealth only it deals with production distribution and consumption of wealth this definition focuses on wealth only now we are going to discuss the second definition of economics second definition of economics is science of material well being 
it was given by sir alfred marshall according to him economics is a study of mankind in the ordinary business of life it examines that part of individual and social action which is most closely connected with the attainment and with the use of material requisites of well being thus it is on one side a study of wealth and on the other an important side a part of study of man it is a study of both wealth and man previously we have seen that the definition of adam smith talks about the science of wealth the sir alfred marshall talks about science of material well being now we are moving towards our third definition which is called science of choice making this definition was given by sir leonel robbins in his landmark essay on the nature of significance of economics leonel robbins defined economics as the science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses we have already discussed in the beginning of this chapter that we have limited resources and unlimited means limited resources means our resources are scarce limited and ends are unlimited we have to manage these limited land these limited labor these limited capital to meet the unlimited needs of the society that's why this definition of economics comes which talks only about the balance between these two now we are moving for, uh, towards the fourth definition science of dynamic growth and development it was given by sir paul a samuelson according to samuelson i am going to tell you the definition economics is the study of how men and society choose with or without the use of money to employ scarce productive resources which could have alternative uses to produce various commodities over time and distribute them for consumption now and in the future among various people and groups of the society so these are the four definitions of economics broadly known as broadly known as the first one science of wealth second science of material well being third science of choice making fourth science of dynamic growth and development now we are moving towards our next topic that that is scope of economics basically scope of economics is divided into two parts microeconomics and macroeconomics we are going to discuss the meaning of the term microeconomics and macroeconomics separately if we talk about the term microeconomics micro is the word originated from the greek word micros micros means small so here microeconomics deals with the small problems problems of an individual like problem of demand and supply of an individual or a firm we are not talking about the economy as a whole we are not talking about the problems of economy like problem of unemployment poverty we are not talking about it we are talking talking about here is the problem of an individual problem of an firm small units so here microeconomics examines how the individual units consumers or firms make decisions as to how efficiently allocate their resources because they have limited resources they have to allocate it efficiently so that no no uh, limited resource would go waste here the focus is on small number of people or groups of unit rather than all the units combined therefore it does not explain what is happening in the wider economic development it is not going to talk about the wider economic environment now we are going to discuss the concept of macroeconomics just opposite to the microeconomics macroeconomics is the word macro originated from greek word macros macros means large macroeconomics is the study of overall economic phenomena or the economy as a whole rather than individual parts we are here talking about the economy as a whole 
problems of economy as a whole problem of poverty of the countries problem of the unemployment of a country problem of national income gdp growth these are the problems and scenarios related to the whole economy accordingly in the macroeconomics we study the behavior of large economic aggregates overall level of output employment total consumption total saving total investment export import foreign investments and also these aggregates shifts over time we have to study here how these aggregates shift over time how our gdp will increase over the time how in unemployment reduce over the time how consumption level changes over the time we are going to discuss all these topics under macroeconomics because it is about the whole economy it analyzes the overall economic environment which the firm governments or household operate and make decisions now we are going to discuss the nature of economics basically nature of economics is divided into two fields science or arts though divided into these two fields it is considered as a part of both it is part of art also it is part of a science also now we are going to see look into the matter that how it is a science how it is an art and how it is both science and an art see first economics as an art what do we call an art art is a field that dwells on the means of expression and application of any skills whether creative pragmatic or emotional art exists all around us and it takes a great mind to appreciate art like any other art form economic requires a great deal of imagination however imagination has to be in the context of reality and cannot be a fleeting idea here economics is goal oriented it states that means to achieve an end similar is the case with arts here in the economics we are using our limited resources to achieve our unlimited needs just like the arts which tells us how to be a part of something economics is also a part of theories that discusses how to be part of an end goal therefore arts and economics deals with the practical economics economics also states theories that discuss the how to part of an end goal therefore arts and economics deals with practical application of book based knowledge both bring life to the theories now we are going to discuss how economics is an how economics is a science if we talk about economics as a science there are reasons behind it first reason is it has a cause and effect relationship just like law of demand we are going to discuss the whole concept of law of demand in our uh, coming units but i just want to give a brief view that law of demand states that when price increases demand will decrease and when price decreases demand will increase there is an inverse relation between these two here the cause is price and the effect is demand so we can call it economics as a science here because it has cause and effect relationship now second reason is it is capable of measurement in terms of money can we measure our exports in terms of money yes can we measure our imports in terms of money yes all these things we can Uh, calculate in terms of money that's why we call it as a science because it is capable of calculation it has its own methodology of study it has induction method it has deduction method and the fourth reason behind the economics as a science is it forecast the future market condition with the help of economics we can forecast what will be the demand what will be the supply what will be the prices of the goods in the market so these will help in forecasting that's why we called here economics as a science also because it helps in forecasting okay so here if we want to sum up that economics is both an art and as a science it's a mixture of both as a circle 
two circles overlapping each other on the right hand side we can see that hence economics as a science deals with the theory and principles and economics as an art deals with the application and execution now we are going to discuss the basic economic problems of any country i am not talking about any particular country here these are the basic problems of any of the economy or any of the country these three problems are what to produce how to produce and for whom to produce if we talk about them one by one what to produce we have limited resources and unlimited needs so we have to decide that which goods to be produced and which goods to be not to be produced for example we have 10 crore rupees for example we have 10 crore rupees and we have to employ this 10 crore rupees in production of certain goods so we have to decide that how much of uh, capital intensive goods capital intensive that means capital goods we have to produce and how much consumer goods we have to produce capital goods includes machinery uh, equipments plants these are the capital goods and consumer goods are the bread and butter which we consume directly so an economy has to decide how much we have to produce the capital goods and how much we have to produce the consumer goods here every economy has to decide whether more guns should be produced or more butter should be produced guns here is an example of capital good and butter is an example of consumer goods or whether more capital goods like machinery equipment dams etc will be produced or more consumer goods such as cell phones will be produced this is the first basic problem it is not only the society has to decide about what goods are to be produced it also has to decide in what quantities each of these goods would be produced we are not talking about how these goods are produced here we are talking about what to be produced and how much quantity of these goods should be produced now the second problem comes here is which goods and uh, the goods and services how it should be produced it should be produced by labor intensive technique or capital intensive technique what does capital intensive technique means a technique which employs more capital and less labor and labor intensive technique means employment of more labor and less capital there are various alternative techniques of producing a commodity right production of hand loom involves use of more labor and production with automatic loom involves use of more machines and capitals so we have to decide here which method should be used if we have a country of uh, larger population or um, populate population abundant country and limited uh, resource of capital here in our country so what should we use the labor intensive technique or capital intensive technique we should focus more on the labor intensive technique because it employs more labor than capital a country might have more capital resources and less labor resources in that country we can employ the capital intensive technique which would use more capital and less labor it is in the society's interest to use those techniques of production that make the best use of the available resources now last problem of any economy is for whom to produce we have already we have already discussed the problem of what to produce how to produce what to in what to produce we have discussed what goods should be produced capital goods or consumer goods in how to produce we have already discussed capital intensive techniques should be used or labor intensive techniques should be used and in third problem we are going to discuss for whom to produce a society cannot satisfy each and every want of the people why because society's want are unlimited and the resources are limited therefore it has to decide for whom we are producing we have a three different layer of society in our country like lower uh, strata of people like lower class society middle class and upper class so we have to decide that whether we are producing for the lower class whether we are producing for the middle class whether we are producing for the upper class if we are producing for the 
lower class then we should produce necessary goods if we are producing for the higher class upper class then we have to produce the luxurious goods and if we are going to produce for the middle class then we should use the combination of necessities and luxurious goods so this is one side of problem of for whom to produce second side of this problem for whom to produce is whether we are going to uh, produce for the people to consume or for return of factors of production we have two options whether distribute these goods among the people to consume or give them as a return to the factors of production for land we have to give them rent so we can give these goods in the form of rent for labor we have to pay them wages so we can um, give these goods to them as wages and the third one for capital we need to pay interest right so in the form of interest we can give these goods to them so we have to decide them what uh, for whom we are producing to the consumer direct consumer or for the factors of production so here i would like to summarize my whole uh, unit here before concluding we have discussed here in this chapter what is the meaning of economics after that we have discussed the four definitions of economics science of wealth science of material well being science of choice making and science of dynamic growth and development after that we have discussed the scope of economics scope of economics is divided into microeconomics and macroeconomics and then after we have discussed nature of economics nature of economics again is divided into two parts whether it is an art or a science we have concluded that it is a combination of both art and a science with this i would like to conclude my session thank you all for joining swadhyaya